وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A questioner asked I'm a female nurse working for the NHS Sometimes I have to provide care for men and even give them injections Please explain to me in detail if I'm doing anything wrong الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمد عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In response to your question the أصل is free mixing between men and women is prohibited and it's not allowed in the sharia women are commanded and informed to cover themselves up. There are many extensive evidences on that. But there are situations where there are exceptions, where either necessity or need, or even a benefit, a shar'i benefit, it will be allowed for the woman to come into contact with men, uh, maybe even free mix, or even touch the opposite gender. Um, is permissible and the situations that it could be permissible is the question that was asked for medical reasons that could be a need for it and the evidence for that is Imam al-Bukhari narrated on the authority of Ar-Rubayy' binti Mu'awwidin that she said Kunna ma'an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nathqi wa nudawi al-jarha wa naruddu al-qatla ila al-madina uh, Ar-Rubayy' binti Mu'awwidin a female companion, she said, uh, we were with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we would give water to the uh, soldiers and we would also, uh, we would also work on the uh, wounded men. We'll do surgery on them to stop the blood. So that means they would come into contact with the opposite gender and that they would also touch the opposite gender. Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in Hadith Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Anas bin Malik and he said, I saw our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of the Prophet. And Umu Sulaim, the mother of Anas bin Malik, he said, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, kanata tanqulan al-qirab ala mutunihima. They both will fill up their, uh, with their water skin, they will fill up water, and they would go to the men in the battlefield, the soldiers, thumma tufrighanihi fi afwahi al-qawm, and they would pour the water into their mouth. Then they will go and they will fill it up again. And then they would go and they put it in the, pour it into the men's mouth. That's what the narration stated. So this is an action which is the battlefield. And there's a maslaha in there, a benefit for the ummah. So it's permissible for the women to stand up and do this. And even if it involves the free mixing of men and women. Imam Muslim also narrated, and Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, that he said that كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يغزو بأم سليم ونسوة من الأنصار that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he went, whenever he would go to the battlefield he would take with him أم سليم and a group of other women from Ansar إذا غزا if he ever went to a battlefield their job was فيسقين الماء they would pour the water for the men ويداوين الجرحى and they would also uh, help the wounded uh, whether, whatever they needed. That also means that they would come into contact with the opposite gender. And even sometimes if there is a maslaha, a maslaha, a benefit uh, for the woman to feed the guests, the woman to feed the guests, there's a maslaha, there's not even, it's not even barura, and it's not even a haja, it's just a maslaha, a benefit, then it's permissible for the woman to feed the men as it was narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim in Hadith Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi that he mentioned لَمَّا عَرَّسَ أَبُوْ أُسَيْدٍ أَسَّاعِدِيُّ When Abu Usaid al-Sa'idi got married, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called for the Prophet and he invited the Prophet and some of the companions فَمَا صَنَعَ لَهُمْ طَعَامًا وَلَا قَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا مَرَأَتُهُ أُمُ أُسَيْدٍ The noble companion Abu Usaid didn't come down to make food for them. And he didn't even bring the food to them and serve them. The person who did that was his wife, Umm Usaydin. She was the one that was serving the men. So we have to understand is that it's permissible. 
But what we also have to understand, it is not permissible for the woman to cover, uncover her aura for a doctor, for example, or um, a man to uncover his aura to a female doctor if there's uh, a man present for the man or a woman present for the woman. If you've got your same gender able to do this for you, you're not allowed to uncover your aura. This is not permissible for you. But if there is uh, no one present for the woman, and so the only person she has is a man, she can only uncover the parts that are needed. She can't cover uncover her entire body. So for example, if he needs to look at her thigh, she's not allowed to uncover her chest, for example, or her hair or her neck. She can't show that to him. She'll only have to show him what he needs to see. As Alibaba Suyuti and Ibn Nujayn mentioned in their books, Al Ashbah wa Nawa'id, the principle known as Abbaruratu Tukadaru Bikadariha. That the necessity has to be in line with what is needed from it. Uncovering your aura is haram, is not permissible. And so you can only do it when there is a there's a need for it. There is a need for it. And if the woman is sick and there's pain that she has, if this pain is not bringing her any destruction or the pain is not severe, then she's not allowed to uncover herself. But if the pain is severe or even it's causing her ill, it's a life and death situation or even it's calling her, causing her excessive pain, then it's permissible for her to uncover her aura to a male doctor and the man is also allowed to uncover his aura to a female doctor. That is if there is a life and death situation or there is a severe pain okay because uncovering your aura is haram okay and this haram can be removed with a necessity but if it's just a light pain that you have to show it to the opposite gender is not permissible because of the qaida which is taqdeeman lil hadiri ala al-mubih the haram will give we will will give precedence to the evidences that do not allow you to uncover your aura over the evidences that allow you to go to a female doctor or even use a female doctor. I also want to say that all of these rulings I mentioned, it applies to the men and also the women alike. It's not restricted to the men or it's not restricted to the women. It's for everybody. Because of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that the women are like the men. And Imam Ahmed and Abu Dawood narrated that hadith in hadith Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha and the hadith has been authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullahu ta'ala as Shaykh Shaib al-Arna'ud graded it to be Hassan but that is with the condition that the women are like the men مَا لَمْ يَرِدْ دَلِيلُ الْخُصُوصِيَّةِ as long as there is no specific ruling that distinguishes one from the other and it's something that's unique for the women but not for the men if an evidence comes then we say okay but generally speaking and nisa'u, the women are shaqa'iq rijal The women are shaqa'iq rijal Innama nisa'u shaqa'iq rijal I'm going to stop there insha'Allah ta'ala. Wal ilmu indallahi knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ikhwanihi wa sallama taslima. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdi ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.